For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's the holidays. It is not something to think about but death. We just had a time of thanksgiving, a proclamation of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln to the Almighty God. But I bet that was not the case Thursday in America. It is sure not the case on a Saturday morning in Daytona Beach to worship and the thankfulness of God. And yet that God, the Creator, who is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ who is God, manifested in the flesh that we might have eternal life. Last week a woman came up to me, oh, you ought to preach the love of God. More love. There is no greater love than the story of Jesus Christ and His coming. There is no greater brutality of the story of Jesus and His suffering for you. And yet that brutality of Jesus Christ, beaten, whipped, punched, hair pulled, the crown of thorns, the nails. And all of that is because God loved us. And the fact is, if you continue, if you reject Jesus Christ, there is no longer the love of God upon you that reject Jesus. Faith in church is not going to get you to heaven. Attendance in a church is not what God has set forth for the way of life. For Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no room for attendance, giving, and good works. For God to be pleased with you. When Jesus said that he set the standard and you have rejected the standard. You have denied, you have lied about, you have cursed, you have rejected Jesus Christ. There is no longer any hope. For the Bible again records that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Love, joy, peace are the fruit of the Spirit. And what the world gives you will be temporal at a great price to pay. The world's means of peace will only last four hours unless the doctor writes you a better prescription which you may not be able to afford. A piece of tranquility that comes in a can or a bottle is only temporal and would have you to act like an idiot for the rest of the time until the next morning you wake up and it's gone. You can get yourself a fix. You can get yourself anything that's illegal. And there would be 
the pleasures of sin according to the Bible, but it's temporal. It don't last. And then when the wages of sin brings forth death, and without Jesus Christ, you to die and wake up in a place called hell of torments, tormented, tormenting according to the Bible. And there will be no earthly, worldly pleasures or fixes after you die without Jesus Christ. The standard before you die, the wages of death, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible records for the present period that we are in today believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you will probably say, well, preacher, whatever you call me, it's okay. Why are there so many religions Because Satan will give you a choice to go to hell. And God has not given a choice. He has set the standard. And that standard is in His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, He has given you a free will to choose or reject His gift. That is the free will that God is giving. But in that free will that is our choice, God, Jesus said, ye must be born again. To receive Christ is a must, but yet God says it's up to you. The love of God is, the fact is that the scriptures say, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Your preacher does not have love. Oh, he may preach it from the pulpit, but where is he out in the world? Where people will mock and criticize the Word of God after being blessed with a bounty of God's fruit without thanking God. That's why preachers hide behind pulpits. Because they're afraid to get ridiculed. They're afraid to get called, name called. They're afraid that the public may not like them. And yet God says in His love, go preach the gospel to those people who will probably not go to church. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The plain, simple truth, whether it be one minute, 45 minutes, two hours, four hours, that only Jesus Christ is able to save your soul from hell. Don't come to me and say, church, I do, I'm good, because the Bible says there is none that doeth good. There is none that are righteous. The only ever one to be righteous and good is Jesus Christ. And when you were or are to receive Jesus as your Savior, 
It is His righteousness. It is His goodness. It is His merit that we are saved. Not of works. At least we boast. And when you come to me and say, well, I go to church. I am good. You are boasting. That is not in heaven. It's not what you have done. It's not what you're going to do. It is not what you are doing. It is what Christ has done. For God so loved the world is past tense. The love of God was approximately 33 A.D. We don't know the dates. The exact dates. But we do know of a surety by the testimony of not only prophecy, but witnesses over 450 people saw the resurrected Christ and talked and walked with Him. There's not even 450 people here right now to say, hey, the farmer's market was open. There were in the life of Jesus a minimum, a minimum of 7,012 people that walked and saw God manifest in the flesh. The feeding of the 4,000. The feeding of the, I believe it was 3,000 or 2,000. And then the 12 disciples that walked with him including the one that Satan answered, has testified that Jesus manifested in the flesh has come, has died, and was buried. And we saw him alive again. And you can take that testimony to a judge without partiality. And you could take the evidence to a judge and the judge would have to rule that is a stated fact. And it will be a stated fact in glory. When the millions upon millions of people have put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and will testify to the trillions and the deficit of those who do not believe upon Jesus Christ. And what makes your religion better than my religion is not the question. It is my Savior who is God is the ultimate standard of salvation that will cast you into hell by whatever you had but Jesus. Again, the words of Jesus is, Depart from me that work iniquity, I never knew you. According to Jesus, I was in a Baptist church. That's a work of iniquity. I gave money. It's a work of iniquity. I ran for breast cancer. That's iniquity. I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God, you should That's the difference. God says you should leave and shut up. No, God said go eat and preach the gospel. How about you shutting up? Foolish people don't know what the Bible says. Speak their mouth and be fools. No, yeah, actually, you know what? Because the Bible says preaching is foolish. But the power of the preaching, the power of the cross, is to those to believe and be saved. Right here. I can just start reading from scriptures from scriptures that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. You know, it's the love of God that the message is brought all over the world. 
listen, this is nothing new. There are people who have all week, and they're going to this afternoon and tomorrow and next week, they're going to do the same thing that's happening right now here at Daytona Beach. They're going to get out in the streets, and they're going to preach the gospel, and they're going to have idiots mock them. They're going to have fools despise them, and the Bible says it is so, and the Bible says that only Jesus Christ is able to save. There is salvation in no other. I hope a cop comes up and gives you a ticket. The saving grace of Jesus Christ is that Jesus Christ able is to save. And there is no other salvation. Rest of sure in Jesus. And that fact is a guy has to break the law to prevent the Bible from being preached. And yet, if a cop were to turn a corner, he would take off right away. And there goes another fool. Who, if he will not believe on Jesus Christ, will offer into eternity in a place that there is no Jesus. I mean, if you don't want to believe in Jesus, you don't want to put your faith in Jesus, you don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, hell is the perfect place for you. There is no Jesus in hell. But there is no resting in hell. There is no mercy in hell. And you can mock on in hell. It ain't going to change nothing. I'll tell you what else is not in hell. There's no constitution in hell. There are no rights in hell. You just get yourself into tormenting forever because you refuse. <coughs> Jesus Christ as your Savior. And yet, if you were to put your faith and put your trust in Jesus Christ, to be absent from the body with death, to be present with the Lord. Now, salvation is not going to make your life wonderful. It ain't going to make it grand. It ain't going to make it happy and joyful. It may make your life worse. But, oh, the benefits that come after you died in Jesus. See, it's not life insurance. It's death insurance. The death of Jesus Christ according to the Scriptures. And with those benefits of Christ suffering on the cross according to the Scriptures. Of Christ being buried. And rising from the dead three days and three nights according to the scriptures. There is no better health care plan ever than what Christ has, will give you. A brand new body with no pain. No sorrow. No co-pays. No more cancer. No more sin. No more tears. And that will await you if you have believed or if you will believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. When we get into the eternal life. Here, it's a veil of tears. It's misery. Life is not good without Jesus Christ. With the world's peace, you get addiction. Oh, this pain medicine works so well. It works great. I need more. I need more. I need more. And the government will shut it down. The Bible speaks about, in the book of Acts, there were people that were addicted to the Word of God. They were addicted to the Scriptures. They were addicted to God. And they said, Lord, more, more. More, and it goes off more, more into the eternal life. And when we all get to heaven by Jesus Christ, there's no more tormented. There's no more pride. There's no more sin. There is the worship and the glory of our God and Creator and Savior. Forever. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son 
You can't find that under your tree at Christmas time. The greatest gift was not under a tree, it was nailed to the tree. And the greatest fact is that Jesus is able to save. Well, it amazing how Satan uses music. If he's not the author of it, I don't know who is. One day you'll stand before God. I'll stand before God. I will stand before God as a sinner saved by grace. I'm still a sinner. But I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now maybe you are. But according to the Bible, there are many out there who are not. And it's to those many that God says, go eat and preach the gospel. Enjoy your music, your radios, and tone out the word of God because you won't get that in hell. There are no antennas in hell. There are no receivers. But you... The wrath of God. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. If you do not want to go to hell, you come to Jesus Christ. God does not honor works and works of the flesh because there is none that doeth good. She's going full right up the park right there like she's selling in the shop. All the signs say no parking, it's everything. take cash, Visa, MasterCard, but God doesn't take that. And when you stand up before the throne of God, and if you do not have the blood of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross, you ain't saved. You ain't secure. Because the blood of Jesus Christ is able to save. Salvation is by what Jesus Christ has done and never what you do. The best you will get is a spot reservation in hell for your best. The names that are written in the book of life for the reservation of heaven are written by their faith and belief through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I'm here. I'm here. You asked me to come. What's up? I said, I'm here. You've been asking to see me. You personally or? I hear you every day, all day. All day? Every, every night. Day. Several times a day. Yeah. You're listening to devils because I don't speak you to you every know. day every night. You never know what they look like. You never know. Not he me can, personally. He can come in any kind of form, brother. Well, that's not me. God, not me. That's what you're talking about. You never know. You never know. He can come in any form. Yeah. A lot of doubt, huh? Nope. I am secure in Jesus Christ. Not by the biblical accounts that I've read about, sir. We met a Gentile Jesus. 
That's not scripture. Let's go ask his father. Saving grace by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Beware, the Bible says that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, there's another Jesus. Plentiful. Death is coming. Death may be coming before you open your Black Friday gifts. And you rejected the gift of God, Jesus Christ. Maybe God will give you the mercy of life so you can open your bills in January, but you still need to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, he's not going to save you of that impossible credit card bill you just rung up. But what about your sins as a bill? At least every hour we're sinning. Every hour we are adding to our sin debt, which we can't pay. The wages of sin is death. Them sins you are doing will catch up with you in a form of a death certificate. And the only access you have to God is by the one that said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There is nothing new about the scriptures of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is you are the sinner Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There is nothing you can do for salvation. It has all been done by Jesus Christ. It's been the same gospel preached since Acts chapter 2. Just don't add church attendance, don't add baptism, don't add money, don't add works. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's simple. Any moron can do it. You are a sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Thinking about sin is just as damning as doing the sin. One sin makes you guilty of being a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. That's plain and simple. If we just continue to go on and ignore the message of the gospel, God will ignore you. You will expect the love of God that is fruity preaching pulpits today, the fruity duty God and John the Baptist said, if you reject God's Son, you will receive the wrath of God. Listen, it's a lie that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That's a lie. Because if he loves the sinner, why is there a hell? Hell is for the penalty because you don't want to give up your sin. You don't want to break down and admit to God that you're the sinner. And there's no greater depressing sin ever to be is country music. Depressing. Thank you. 
but there's no depression in God in heaven in glory. All tears are wiped away. All sorrows are gone in the eternity by Jesus Christ. Finish work. You'll never hear putrefying music again in glory. All the music and glory in heaven is about and for Jesus Christ and will always be right. I understand you don't want Jesus, you don't want to hear about Jesus, you don't care about Jesus, you wish the preaching of Jesus would shut up. Then take your chances in hell. I advise you not to. But where I'm going, there's Jesus, the Savior, the God, the glory, the mercy, the grace. And where you're going, there is no Jesus, there is no glory, there is no grace, there is no care, there is no peace. Saith the Lord unto the wicked. Go that route. You will not find your alcohol and your prescriptions in hell. You will find no mercy and grace in hell. But the love, the mercy, and the grace is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I can tell right now the lack of thanksgiving to God that was on Thursday. How dare you enjoy a holiday given by your presidents in the honor of God the Father, the Almighty. And then you celebrate the next day by Black Friday. You know, hell is blackness. There's no light in hell. There's no joy in hell. There are no gifts in hell. There are no cell phones in hell. What are you going to do? And you're going to look at your hand, you won't even see your hand being torment. And in that hand, you wouldn't want a cell phone. You would want just a little drop of water to cool your tongue, the Bible says. Meanwhile, those that believe on Jesus in, in, in heaven will be, let's sing one more song, one more hymn to the glory of God. No more tears. No more sorrows. Because Jesus is able to save. And you're to put your trust in that salvation. A brand new body. In glory. Forever. While you reject Jesus, are in torment. And you have heard the gospel. You may try to mute the gospel, but you have heard. You have heard that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. You're without excuse. You can never tell God anymore, I never knew. You can never say, second chance. Do over. Because there is no second chance. There is no timeout. There is no do over. When you have died rejecting Jesus Christ for your saving, for your salvation, for your Savior. 
And when you wake up in the gates of hell by rejecting Jesus Christ, it is forever and eternity more. It is a rejection of God that will last when time will be no more. And a time that if you were to put your trust and your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, a time no more of a new body. A time of no more of sorrow. Everything you do in glory will be right. You won't have to think about it anymore. There will be no more rash decisions in, in heaven. But your rash decisions are to reject and mock the gospel. Is hopeless. It's damning. It's in condemnation. You want more love of God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. That's the only way you're going to get the love of God. Right now, the love of God is the message that's being preached about the gospel. John the Baptist said, if you reject God the Savior, it's the wrath of God. Oh, things may be great now. You might be making great profits now. You might be having a great time now. Try it in the eternity without Jesus Christ. Try it then. Try the eternal life without Jesus Christ. It's not good. Then again, you can try the eternal life with the faith and belief on Jesus. And John the Baptist said, that's eternal life. And I can't even say that heaven will be satisfied because it's just going to get better and better and better and better. You know, one of the, one of the great words in the book of Hebrews, not only let us, but another word that's found that's great through the Bible is better. <laughs> How can you describe heaven? It can't be described. But if you were to ask me, I'd say it gets better and better because of Jesus. It don't get better without Jesus. When you will hear from the lips of God, depart from me that work iniquity, I never knew you. That's not good. If there's ever to be known, is to be known by God. And to be known by God is to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. What's the old expression? It's not what you know it's who you know it's not what I can do it's what Jesus Christ has done for me because I can't do it so I'm going to heaven by not what I've done I'm going to heaven by who I know and this is not Jesus God bless you do you have a father do you have a father he won't answer. When John the Baptist says that eternal life rests in the sun, or it's wrath of God for not knowing the sun, it's your choice. I, I've done what God's told me to do. <clears throat> 
and through the pages of the scripture to preach the gospel. I've done my part. I have either planted the seed or I have watered the seed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Without it, you go to hell. And you will burn in hell forever because you have chosen to reject Jesus Christ. Again, you are hopeless without Jesus Christ. Wrath of God upon those that do not have the Son. It may look good now. Even the book of Hebrews says the pleasures of sin. I believe it says for a season. I think it says season. Imagine the Bible admitting that your sins are pleasurable for a season. But when your season is up and the wages of sin is death and for your pleasures of sin you get the wrath of God it only gets worse. It only gets worse. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.